A few CDL school tips for you guys in the audience that need it to help you get through CDL school, help you get a little bit of a better understanding of what to expect when you go to CDL school. The first tip, which is actually really not a tip, it's more of an inquiry. As of right now, fall 2022, I still have not definitively verified that CDL school is mandatory in all states in order to get your CDL. I've been looking around online for information. I've gone to the FMCSA website. I've seen information to verify that ELDT training is mandatory, but I haven't verified that CDL school is mandatory in all states. In addition, I'm seeing people that are saying that as of right now, they're still able to get their CDL without going to CDL school. You guys that know more about this, please let me know down in the comments because again, as of right now, I still have not definitively verified that CDL school is mandatory. Whether it's a good idea to try to get your CDL without going to CDL school, that's another video. I just wanna let you guys know as of right now that if you're still trying to get your CDL without going to school, if you're in the right state, you may still be able to do that. Again, if you got more information on that, let us know about it down in the comments. Tip two, paid CDL school, where you pay up front to go to CDL school to get your CDL, and then you have the freedom to go wherever you want to after you get your CDLs. That type of CDL training, in my opinion, is best primarily for the individual that has a job locked down, already knows where they're gonna work after they get their CDL. I'm hearing people say, that they're going to paid CDL training or paid CDL school where they're paying up front, they're getting their CDL, and then they'll, they're going to a bigger company and some bigger companies are still charging people for their training even though they show up already with a CDL, which leaves the individual wondering, why did I pay to get my CDL? I should have just gone through this particular company's company-sponsored CDL training program. Sure, I would have been locked in there for a year, but I wouldn't have had to think about how I'm gonna get my training. I wouldn't have had to think about where I'm gonna work, and I probably wouldn't have had to come out of pocket up front to go to CDL school. So, in my opinion, paid CDL training is best for the individual that has a job securely locked in after they get their CDL. Company-sponsored CDL training is best for the individual that, for the most part, has no idea where they're gonna work after they get their CDL. For a CDL school tip, you're probably not gonna feel ready to be in real world situations after you get your CDL, after you finish CDL school. Especially if you go to the type of CDL school that's not attached to a company that can employ you afterwards. In my opinion, it's really not possible for those types of CDL schools to be able to get you ready to be behind the wheel in all situations in the 30 or the 60 days that they have you for. It's just not possible. Your job in that scenario is simply to get you ready and to help you pass your CDL test. But the only way to actually know and actually learn how to actually drive a truck is out on the road in real world situations and that type of school doesn't have the ability to do that for you. So if you come out of CDL school and you don't feel like you're prepared and you went to that type of school, it may not actually be the school's fault. It's quite natural, actually. Next CDL tip. When you're in CDL school, you want to get as much time in that truck practicing your different backing maneuvers as you possibly can. Like every time you execute a backing maneuver, when you finish doing it, you're going to get out the truck. It's going to be a line of people there waiting to get in the truck behind you. Now, you're going to notice when you finish executing that maneuver, sometimes you're going to get out and everybody's going to be talking. They're going to be over there chattering it up, be in the peanut gallery. Don't just stand on the side and wait for one of them. Get those people 15 or 20 seconds, and if they don't jump back in that truck, even though you just got out, get back in that truck. Like, they literally had to stop me from getting in the truck when I was going through CDL school. They literally was like, yo, dude, you've been in the truck four different times executing that maneuver, and you ain't gave us a chance to do it yet. And I was like, look, I gave you time, but you standing over there talking, so I figured you had it down already. <laughs> when I first started CDL school, I thought that, Naturally, I was gonna be prepared to drive and feel like I was ready when I got out of CDL school. But once I got in, I realized that, you know what, if I'm gonna get the knowledge that I need to be able to pass my CDL test, it's gonna be up to me. And once I realized that, if a person didn't go ahead and take their turn to execute a maneuver, I cut in line right in front of them. I'm not gonna sit there and wait for 20 and 30 seconds while people are talking. I'm gonna get back in that truck and I ain't really worrying about who's upset with it because I realized the importance of take an initiative. So get all the practice you can executing those maneuvers. Don't worry about those other people there, especially the ones that's wasting time talking. And tip number five, while we on the subject, 
of executing backing maneuvers while you're in CDL school, I might as well give you a few backing tips. Number one, straight backing. People have asked me questions here on the channel about straight backing before. And the best tip that I can give you for straight backing in this type of video is when you're straight backing, you should be able to look down both sides of your mirror. Look out of both mirrors and see straight down both sides of the trailer. If you can't do that, you're not straight backing. When you're in curved backing situations, like your 90 degree or your parallel or your alley dock situations, then you're gonna rely more on angles. You're gonna rely on lines, the lines that are on the ground, and you're gonna rely on timing. When you're in a 90 degree situation, understeering is better than oversteering. Because if you understeer, that's gonna put you wide of the hole that you're trying to back into. If you oversteer, it's gonna do the opposite. So if you understeer and you're wide of the hole that you're trying to back into, you can easily pull up. And then you're gonna notice when you do that, it's gonna line your trailer up with the hole. Then you can back up more in a straight backing execution. If you oversteer in your 90 degree and you're on the other side of the hole, when you try to pull back up, it's not gonna line your trailer up with the hole. So understeering when you're in a 90 degree situation is better than oversteering. Now, when you're in a parallel situation, understeering and oversteering is not good. That's a situation where you're gonna rely on the lines that are on the ground, and you're gonna use your tires and the lines to square yourself up. So you're gonna be using angles, and you're gonna rely on timing in those situations as well. Make sure you're going slow so that you give yourself as much time and room as you need to correct if you need to. Those are just a few quick backing tips. If you got any value from them, be sure you smash the like button before you click off the video. Damn, I don't messed up the angle of the camera. CDL school tip number six, having a manual restriction on your CDL could limit your opportunity. There are a lot of companies out here that have automatics. So a lot of people will tell you if you got a manual restriction, probably won't matter. Most of the fleets out here have automatics that you can drive. I'm old school. I'm one of those guys. I'm looking at it from the perspective of the small fleet owner that's maybe going through a downsizing. And I know it's a long shot, but I'm just feeling that if it's between the guy that can drive anything on the lot and the guy that can only drive automatics and the owner has to pick from those two guys. Again, I know it's a long shot, probably not going to happen, but I would say in that situation, the guy that can drive anything on the lot has more value. You guys that know more about this, feel free to let me know your perspective on what I just now said down in the comments, even if it differs from mine. CDL school tip number seven, a lot of people will ask, why do they even make you double clutch? They have to know that you can properly shift a manual transmission, a 10 speed transmission. And the only way to know that is to get you to demonstrate that by having you double clutch. And Eden Fuller actually recommends that their transmissions be double clutched. So if you're, if, so if you don't want a manual restriction on your CDL, you're gonna have to double clutch. And the reason why they want you to double clutch is they need to know that you know how to use a clutch. Even though you may not use it in real world situations, that's why they have you demonstrate that via double clutching through your road test. CDL school tip number eight. We're talking about shifting, so might as well give you guys a few shifting tips. Shifting a 10 speed manual transmission semi truck is all about matching the road speed with the RPMs. You don't even have to actually use the clutch in order to shift in all situations. Most drivers when we're out on the road in real world situations, we're only using the clutch when the road speed and the RPMs don't match up. When we're going uphill or when we're going downhill, when we're loaded, when for whatever reason we wanna shift and the RPMs and the road speed don't match. Or obviously if we're taking off from the light. But other than that, most drivers I would assume, I know I, I'm not using the clutch to shift all day. I'm shifting by matching the RPMs and the road speed. So with that being said, if you're riding with a trainer that's cool with it and that will allow it, ask him, can you try to shift the truck without using the clutch? Or at least ask him, can you try pulling the truck out of gear without using the clutch? Because when the road speed and the RPMs match, you can just give the gear shift a little tug or a little push and the gear shift will fall right out of gear. And in my opinion, if you can understand the mechanics of matching the RPMs and the road speed, which you have to do if you're gonna shift without using the clutch or even take the truck out of gear without using the clutch, once you understand that, it should be easier to then throw the clutch into doing that because you actually don't have to use the clutch to shift. So you may not be able to do that one. When I try shifting without the clutch with my trainer, he told me pull the damn truck over. So your trainer may not allow that, but if he does, try that one. And CDL school tip number nine, 
It is not the people at the CDL school's job to make sure you get the knowledge that you need to in order to pass your CDL test. It's their job to provide the info, but it's not their job to make sure you get it. It's your job to make sure you get the information and the knowledge and the experience that you need in order to be ready on test day. So if you're in a school, if you're already paid for it, you're already started, and you don't feel like you're getting the attention that you need, then you might have to think creatively. I was talking to a girl the other day that told me she used to buy pizza for the people at her CDL school, for the instructors at her CDL school. And she wasn't obvious with it, but what she was wanting to get was extra attention out of the situation. And she was able to romance those people right into giving her what she felt like she needed. So like, try that if you have to. Buy the people their pizza. Bring some coffee in for the instructors. Bring some donuts in or something for the instructors. Because if for whatever reason you're not getting the attention, the time that you need in CDL school, the time behind the wheel, whatever it is, if you're not getting that, again, that's not the school's obligation. They're not going to be the one that's going to not have a CDL. That's going to be you. So it's your responsibility to make sure that you get what you need while you're in CDL school. It's nobody else's responsibility to make sure you get that. So be willing to romance those people if you got to in order to get the attention and the time that you need while you're in CDL school. Now, family, I've given plenty of CDL tips and help to individuals going through CDL school here on the channel. Two videos you're looking at right now are my most popular CDL tip video and my most recent CDL tip video. If you haven't seen either one of them, be sure to check them out.